Hi, my name is Olivia Raven and Jessica Cox, Olivia Purcell and myself will be presenting our assignment 2 for the unit EDF 3211, Inclusive Education, Teaching Diverse Learners. For this assignment, we will be focusing on Move to Learn, which is a program that aims to overcome learning difficulties and disabilities and enabling all children to reach their full potential. We will begin by providing some background information on the program and its aims and why it is needed. We will discuss how it is effective in a classroom as a teaching strategy and how we can evaluate this. And finally, we will provide a resource which could be used by teachers in classrooms to implement this teaching strategy. Every child that walks through the classroom door is different and unique. However, when a child first starts school, there is often an expectation that they will learn to read and write immediately. Therefore, one of the biggest assumptions for children when they start school is that every child is ready to start learning about reading, writing and maths. But what are the foundation skills that every child needs to have before this type of learning can occur? There is a lot of preparation that needs to occur before a child is ready for academic learning and most of this learning occurs through interactions with the natural environment and play. Using these two baskets, we can see the difference between a child who has the foundations for learning and a child who does not. According to Neurosteps 2018, the foundations for learning include the development of primitive reflexes, the development of postural reflexes, the development of senses, and the development of oral language and auditory and visual skills. In this example, the basket with the covered holes represents a child who has the foundations for formal learning in place, compared to the basket with the holes, which represents a child who has not yet developed these skills. The water in this bucket represents knowledge and learning. As you can see, when the knowledge and learning is poured into the basket with the covered holes, it stays within the basket. When the knowledge and learning is poured into the basket with the holes, it does not stay inside. This represents a child who does not have the foundations of formal learning. According to Griffin 2012, these skills of development build on each other, and if a foundation skill is not acquired, it could compromise the entire learning structure. A child who has not yet developed these essential learning skills may struggle with age-appropriate physical skills as the conduction of messages to the brain and nervous system will be insufficient and slow, therefore making academic learning more difficult. Learning difficulties are often caused by a neurological immaturity where a child's ability to conduct messages to and from the brain are insufficient. This is often due to the two sides of the child's body and their brain being unable to work together. Research suggests that these developmental stages can be addressed and overcome at any age. If a child is having difficulty at school, then sometimes revisiting these stages again or for the first time can help fill in the gaps in the stages of development to ensure academic learning can occur. The Move to Learn program 2017 is a simple flexible movement program that is based on the natural movements of babies and toddlers. It focuses on sensory development and is designed to address the stages of development that may have been missed to increase learning readiness. It assists in developing the left and right brain functions, helps to mature the vestibular system, stimulates postural reflexes, and helps to develop balance and core stability. When this program is implemented to a classroom, improvements are seen in coordination, concentration, control, and sensory processing which are essential foundations for academic learning to occur. The Move to Learn program is seen to benefit the whole class, not just students with learning difficulties. These improvements include behaviour, organisation and focus. Hi, my name is Olivia Raven and for this part of the assignment I will be focusing on 
the efficiency and effectiveness of this strategy in the classroom and in specific how our chosen strategy supports student learning needs, participation and engagement in classroom activities. So Goddard Blythe discusses that reflexes, in particular primitive reflexes, are automatic movements and are essential for motor control. When a child fails to develop automatic motor control, they may experience some classroom learning difficulties such as unsatisfactory peer relationships or reversals in reading and writing. These difficulties impact a child's ability to learn to their full potential. If postural reflexes are not gained at a young age, children may experience difficulty with control of movement, which could affect their balance, fine motor skills and coordination. These factors can be detrimental to a student's learning and concentration in class and may lead to underachieved education. The Institution for Neurophysiological Psychology has done research in this area and results have shown that the wiring of the CNS, the central nervous system, is in fact changeable. Therefore, the implementation of a program such as Move to Learn is effective in all schools as most classrooms consist of students with neurological learning difficulties, which as stated, at an early age can be easily changed. Not only is it evident that this teaching practice is effective for learning in the classroom through the development of fundamental skills, but it, but it is also effective because it gets students moving their bodies actively, which Tempowski, Bailey, Mewson and Shafir explain has a strong connection with educational achievement. They explain that allowing students to move their bodies in a classroom environment can increase concentration and involvement and enhance overall learning. They discuss, that positive, but they discuss the positive relationship between ADHD-related behaviour, exercise and cognitive functioning. Research shows that allowing students with ADHD to regularly, regularly get up and move can keep them on task during the classroom. Therefore, this type of practice in, the, in a classroom is beneficial for other reasons than what we are mainly focusing on furthering its effectiveness. As I have stated in the last few minutes, it is common that students need to revisit the developmental stages which mature the left and right brain functions in relation to sensory development, postural and primitive reflexes, and oral language, auditory and visual skills. If some students are experiencing learning difficulties due to a lack of foundation skills learned at a young age, it is only fair that schools implement activities and programs where they can practice strengthening these functions so that they can achieve the most out of their individual learning. The Institute for Neurophysiological Psychology provides multiple reports that have resulted in evidence towards improved education attained through movement programs. We have provided a resource which can be used by students and teachers to implement this teaching practice into a classroom. It is easy to read and visual demonstrations are provided. We have also provided a video of a student performing this movement process and an audio recording attached explaining which movements are being performed. Teachers could easily implement this practice into their daily classes as a strategy for increasing the development of students' fundamental skills, engaging the class at the start of the day, and to achieve equal learning opportunities for all students. There are no comparisons made between different abilities to perform the required movements. It is up to, to the students to evaluate their progress as individuals. This supports an in an individualised learning approach and the practice can be easily adapted or modified to suit different, different students' needs. Overall, if students are given the opportunity to revisit the developmental stages whilst at school on a regular basis, they will have a greater chance at increasing their education and overall achieve greater learning. So starting with rolling, what the students will need to do is continue to roll in a straight line and use their hips and their shoulders to guide the movement of rolling one way and then rolling the next way. The next movement is gliding on the stomach where students will lift their arms and then lower. After that they will lift their legs and then lower 
and then after that what they will need to do is lift both their arms and legs and try and arch their back and hold their limbs above the ground. The next movement is tummy curls. So this is where students will lie on their back, cross their arms over their chest and roll up. The next one is unilateral flip flops, which is where students will bend the same arm and leg up towards their head and then back down to the side. Crawling is another movement where students will crawl across the floor on their stomach. Students can also do crawling with the same arm and leg as well as crawling with opposite arms and legs. Ensure that the Move to Learn program is having positive effects in the classroom. Educators could measure student performance in six week intervals. The program is expected to take at least six to 12 weeks to have a noticeable impact on students. So therefore, any time after that, there should be a measurable difference in students' concentration, ability to grasp and re re retain different concepts and information, and their overall learning. We believe this teaching strategy is extremely inclusive as it allows all students to participate. It provides options for students who may be physically or intellectually impaired by showing them a range of different movement techniques that cater for a range of different movement abilities. Teachers would also be able to just adjust different movements for their students so they can do what they can if they have different disabilities. The program also has no disadvantage or advantage for gender or sexual orientation as every child is doing the exact same movement, the exact same speed, the same time and it doesn't have any strength components or anything like that. The program also has no equipment so students with a low socioeconomic status are going to be able to do it just as easy as students who have a high or normal socioeconomic status. All they'll need is the worksheet to complete the movement so they don't need to worry about any equipment or having technology or any of that. They just need to go through the exercises with their teacher and then they'll be able to complete it at home and at school. The program is also focused on movement. So students who have a language barrier or who have English as their second language are also going to be able to find it really easy to complete this, the program as they can either copy a student that is their friend or that they can talk to or that they can communicate with or they can just copy the movements that are on the worksheet. The simple movements that make up the program also allow students of all skill levels to feel included as they are easy and fundamental movements.